जय राधा माधव जय कुंज विहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज विहारी जय राधा माधव जन वल्लभ जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गिरिवर धारी जय गिरिवर जय गिरिवर धारी जय गिरिवर धारी यशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजन
लाल की जय श्यावर रामचंद्र की जय सिंग दिस टेंथ कैंटो ऑफ भागवतम एंड लास्ट नाइट लास्ट टाइम एंड वी सॉ वी सॉ भगवान श्री कृष्णा Dancing on the hair of that Kaliya. It's called a Kaliya Mardana. We hear all the time, right? Kaliya Mardana. Well, Mardana means he kill the ego of Kali, not kill Kali, Kaliya. He saved Kaliya actually. Kaliya lived, and he sent him away to live some other place because all his wives prayed for him. All the wives of Kaliya prayed to Lord Krishna. They sang a long hymn to that Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna spared his life. In in the Shastras, many places, the wives have great power. You know, that Jalandhar Rakshasa. Nobody could kill him. Even Bhagwan couldn't kill him because his wife's tapas was so powerful. the wife tapas can book magic is a wonderful thing in shastras we'll see encounter so like that all the wives of this kaliya they pray to lord krishna lord krishna spare his life but of course he was reformed so the old kaliya was dead a new kaliya was born so therefore still they say kaliya mardan Kaliya Mardan. Do we say they say all the time, na? Mardan means yeah, slayer. But really, they didn't slay. Slay the ego. So that is what the important thing to slay actually. So now, if we look, this is with what chapter now? We see some little chapter sixteen, and we have to go all the way down to. Fifty-four, page one one five in this book. Whoever have this book, one one five. Shri Shuka Uvacha. We we'll study this a little because Kaliya himself made some nice comments about things about the nature of this world. Remember, we have to study Jiva Jagat and Jagadishwara. All we have to know well. The nature of this jiva, the nature of this jagat, the nature of Jagadishwara. Jagadishwara, I say, because it's easy to remember three J's. They say Ishwara, jiva, jagat, and Ishwara. So Jagadishwara. So now, our nature of jiva and jagat, Kaliya makes some nice statements. He reformed Kaliya, so now he has opportunity to make good statement. On reform Kaliya, we don't listen to him. <laughs> After reformation, we pay attention to his words. Now, this is number fifty-four. Let us see from there. Shri Shuka Uvacha, Itham Sanagapatni Bhihi, Bhagwan Sam. भगवान मूर्छित भग्नशिसम विसर्जाघ्रिकुटन Some of these words and all sound so like the word, like the action itself. No, cut any cut any means pounding, piecing. You know, piece that pounder. Cut any, cut na, cut na. Is is is. Now we have page gone. Cut na, to pound, to piece, to to what is what is that? Grind. What is that? Piece masala. 
115 I told you. Yeah. So, Bhagwan with his foot, you know, pounding his head like that. Angry, angry means foot. Angry. Now when you join up all of those words, Visasar, Visasar, ja, Visasar, ja, I mean, really sing him now. After pounding his head, one. But one good thing, you know, later on, Bhagwan tells him, you go back. What had happened? This Kaliya, he had come from this uh, Nagalok, different Loka. And he, he is actually related to this Garut. And one time, both of them had a fight. And he bit this Garut. Garut is eagle and snake. Look at that. And, then, and so he had left that loka and came here and was hiding in Yamuna under that water with all his wives and uh, entourage and children and uh, a whole... He had a whole city underneath there. This is, uh, this is the first Atlantis. <laughs> he was living under that ocean, under that uh, big uh, pool of water in Yamuna. So anyway, Bhagwan tells him now, after this, See, everything has to be, even though Bhagavan pounded his head so many times and all that, right? Now you go back to your loka. And when the Bhagavan Krishna is Garut's uh, incarnation of Vishnu and Garut is Vahan only. This is, Garut is his vehicle. You go back. Now when Garut sees my footprint on your head, Garut will not come. Close, so now you can live without fear. See, even all that pounding of the foot and it breaking his crown and head and all that, and that also has some benefit. Guru knows Bhagwan's footprint so well that when he sees, uh, oh, Bhagwan's footprint there, oh, Guru will not come near to you. Every negative thing also has some benefit, and no matter how negative that thing is, it will have some benefit. It, it causes evolution in some way or the next. Even only thing is human beings are not trained to see that. We have to train ourselves to see that evolution from every negative situation. Some something will come. So with all that pounding on his head, Bhagwan now released him. Visasadja. Murchitam Bhagnashirasam with all his head broken. And Murchita means unconscious. In this way now, just now this tuti, this tuti of all the wives just finished. So he says, Itham in this way. So Nagapatni bhi, all, by all the wives, this tuti of Bhagwan was done, like that. Huh? And Bhagwan now released this, well, unconscious, he didn't say dead, unconscious. In Trinidad we say half dead. <laughs> half dead. Now, see next, next one. Pratilabdhendriya pranaha Kaliyashana kair harim Nakritchrat samuchvasandinaha Krishnam praha kritanjali Pratilabdhendra pranha means now when Bhagavan released him and after the prayer of all the wives and all they prayed for him they beseeched Lord Krishna to save him now Pratilabdhendra pranha he regained his consciousness <coughs> his senses started working again <coughs> because just now it's a murchitam murchitam means Unconscious. Now he came back to life as though aware, conscious, and all that. Kaliya, Shanakai, he gradually, slowly. And Krichrat. Krichrat means with great difficulty, means after all that beating, you know, if ordinary person beat you, is alright, maybe the Lord himself beat you. So therefore, with difficulty, you know, great difficulty. Shanai, shanakai, he slowly kaliya ha, the dina ha kaliya ha, dina, you see? Dina means poor fellow. 
with the Aziz. Because Tulsi Ramayana is a simple text and is written in Avati language, you can feel the power because you're reading a simple language and you can identify with the simple language. But this composition of Ved Vyasji is exactly the same thing in Sanskrit. But because people are not familiar with Sanskrit, the bhava doesn't come. The bhava of, you know, um, bhakti or the bhava of um, feeling for the uh, feeling for the other being and all that is it is also expressed in Sanskrit, but Sanskrit is not, people are not familiar with Sanskrit. So the, one doesn't feel that bhava. But once you get the feel of the language, it's exactly the same as Tulsi Ramayana, no difference actually. Dinaha Kaliya means the, the poor, helpless Kaliya slowly Shanakehi Pratilabdendriya Pranaha he again slowly re regained his consciousness and his senses started working and his life came back and all that kind of thing uh, with great difficulty. And Samut he started breathing loudly. I'm not loudly, how do you say breathe now? Heavily. Started breathing heavily. Because when a person is unconscious and when they come they come to life, they start breathing heavily like that. Krishnam Praha Kritanjali. Harim Krishnam Harim Praha Praha Kritanjali with his hands together now. Putting his hands together, he, did, he said to Lord Krishna. See, two words are in second case, and Harim and Krishnam. So to that Krishna, to Hari, who is Krishna there? Kaliya Uvacha, Vayam Khala Sahot Patya, Tamasa Dirkha Manyavaha, Swabhavo Dustyajo Natha Lokanam Yatasadgaha Kaliya is making a statement of fact eh, about the nature of Jagatya in this. And the nature of Jiva and Jagat both, because Jiva is part of Jagat. And see what he says. Vayam Khalaha. Us wicked people. <laughs> He is admitting it. Eh? Oh, we wicked people, how you say? We wicked people. Vayam khalaha. We wicked people. Sahot patya tamasa dirgamanyavaha. We are born. Sahot patya means, utpatya means at the time of birth. Utpatya means by birth. Utpatya, by birth. We are born. Saha, with what? Tamasa, tamas means tamas. By birth, we come with that dark and gloomy and dreary disposition. Tamasic. Then, second thing, Dirgamanyavaha, always angry. Dirgamanyavaha, always angry or angry or for a long time. That means always angry, but Dirgha. Swabhavaha, Dustyajaha, and and by nature, we are like that now. And Dustyajaha is very difficult to drop this. Because how you, when something is born in a certain way, created in a certain way, made in a certain way, how it will give up its swabhava? How you could go and tell the, uh, what you call, lychee fruit from you to stop being sweet from now. Lychee fruit is sweet, isn't it? Or mango. Well, you could tell mango, some mango sour like anything because they have a concept called sour mango in Trinidad. Oh, yes, yeah, so sour plum. Or you could tell sour plum. You stop being sour. Now start being sweet. It's born like that. Made like that. Sahot Patya. By birth. So he's stating, a, he's making a statement of fact, actually, about the world. Huh? That in the world, there will be people who are born with sattvic gunas, and there will be people who are born with tamasic. I mean, predominantly, it means all, to, uh, please understand this about gunas. All things in the world ha must have the three gunas. It is just when we speak about sattvic guna or tamasic guna, we mean predominantly. When it predominantly sattvic, predominantly tam tamasic, predominantly 
Rajasik. Huh? Don't think that something is only 100% Sattvic, 100% Rajasik. Not possible. No, nothing can exist like that. So now, he said, but, uh, and now to drop this nature, that, that is, Dushya Jaha, it's very difficult to drop. drop. That dus when you put in front is difficult. That means difficult. Dus. Dus is difficult to drop. He not. He prabhu. Lokanam. Yet asat grahat. And it is by this, this guna which we are born with, all the wicked people, it is by that only we stick to asat, means wrong things. Yet asat grahat. Grahaha. We hold on to and we go on doing all wrong things only. So the idea is, and so one fact about Jagat now, don't expect ever at any time, whether you talk about your Satyug, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, Kal Yuga, any Yuga, you talk about Yuga, but in every Yuga, there will be great sages and there will be wicked. Like in Satyug, we everybody talk, that time Bhagavan avatar five times he came in Sat Yuga. Out of ten avatar, five avatar came in that one yuga. Then if Sat Yuga is so good, then why five avatar has to, to come? Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyakshan all belong to Sat Yuga only. Imagine. Mahabali. It's the same Mahabali who wanna beat up Indra and everybody and take away all the kingdom and everything. Rakshas. In that yuga, how you say that you only have good people? The nature of the sansar, the nature of the jagat is there is positive and there is negative. Always. It will always be there. So now, if you are going to live in the sansar, you understand that there will be negative people, negative things, negative experiences negative occurrences it will be, you can't get rid of it it is actually essential i just told you that the negative things cause us to evolve bhagwan has put it there for a reason when one pedal of the bicycle is forward the other one is backward but that one goes back only so that it can give the required trust to go forward for that bicycle. It has to go back to, to gain the required trust to propel the bicycle forward. So the one that is back, the one that is forward, already forward, we can't push anything more. The bicycle cannot go by that forward one because already it is forward. What it will do now? In order to push the bicycle forward, it has to now Go back, yeah. See, it's the backward one that is actually capable of. So, it's, and in the same way, it is the negative things that actually bring evolution. If everything in this world were easy, simple, people would have never evolved. Everybody would have, with their mouth open. <laughs> Just lie there and do nothing. So it is the negative things that push and we should use every negative situation like that. So anyway, now he tells, it, it is, and, and he starts with Vayam Khalaha. Vayam Khalaha means we wicked people. So he admits of a given category, indispensable. I have gone through this with you already, telling you that if you really do an analysis, you will see that they are very essential. The whole society will crumble if we keep people who are not there. Those will uphold the society. You should do arati for them, you know. They uphold society, you know. Tuti Daji, remember in Rama and Balkan, how you were saluting all the wicked people also? Like that. He said, we wicked people, we are like this. And it's very difficult. And then, now see next, next verse, 57. Tvaya srishtamidam vishwam. 
धातर गुण विसर्जन नाना स्वभाव वीर यौज यौज नाना स्वभाव वीर यौज योनि बीजाशया कृति नवी त्वया सृष्टम इदम विश्व दिस विश्व लाइक दिस You made me wicked, and you made some people good. You see, to a certain extent, Madam Vishnu, by you, by you only, the whole thing was created. Ah, Dhatur Guna Visarjanam. You sent forth all beings made up of all the gunas and different material from which they are made. Dhatha, you are the upholder of the whole thing also. And by gunas, by different qualities, and all you made. And then what? What you mean? Nana so have a vid, vidyao jasa, vidyao jaha. You made all creatures. Yoni bija shaya kritihi. You sent all creatures in different forms, different yonis, right? And of they are of different strength, different nature, swabhav, mental inclination means intellectual inclination bent. And proclivities and all that. Were you the one who sent? And various, various nature of all creatures. No two creatures same also. Scorpion, snake, both may sting with poison, but how the nature is so different. Na na swabhava. What a nice. And even among one species, like human beings, everybody's swabhava is so different. Then he continues. Vayam chatatra bhagavan sarpa jat churu manyavaha katham tyajamas tvan mayam dus tyajam mohita swayam. And we, snakes, he says, vayam cha tatra mang tatra mang all these beings who you have created. We snakes, sarpaha, jati urumanyavaha means to say our nature is venomous only. Venomous and what you call that? Venomous and uh, angry all the time. We have that type of nature, and we got that nature from who? From you only. Katham tajam ha. Tvat mayam. How can we become free from your maya like that? We as mohita ha sarpa ha. The mohita goes with sarpa ha. Mohita sarpa ha. This tajam. So I am. By ourselves, we are not capable of doing it. That is the idea. And this is a very significant statement in Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam is where this type of bhakti is first introduced. What? That we need the help of Bhagavan. This is Swayam Katham Tyajam Tyajamaha. This difficult thing to do what? To drop our own swabhav, drop our own nature. Or in the case of a snake, I'm, the snake's nature is venom only. To spew venom, angry, wicked, this, that, khali. He only said there's no khalaha. So to drop that, how we'll drop? There's one more thing. Eh? In all of this, there's something behind all of these lines. That every person should first of all figure out his own swabhav. And given that swabhav, use that swabhav to gain moksha. That is the behind all of that. In other words, if you are going to try to change swabhav of anything in this world, you are actually going against the grain of what Bhagwan Himself manifested, isn't it? Bhagwan manifested the different nana swabhav. Just now we saw various swabhav and different natures of different creatures and all things. So we shouldn't try to change nature of anything. You go and you catch a tiger and a lion, you pull out your teeth and bring him in the circus.
People, human beings always trying to change the nature and swabhav of everything. You know that the world is there in a certain way. This season will come after this season will come and that season will come and everything works by its own. Who made it? Bhagwan. Oh. And we are always trying to change everything. Do you know? Now they have uh, some sort of chemicals, they fly up in the sky and they release it in the clouds and it rains. They can bring rain also. So you want to change? Bhagwan made the cloud to rain when it is supposed to rain and nature and everything like that. But we want to make change? Everything. So we catch the lions and we tame them. Catch elephants and bring them to, to sit and hold an umbrella. <laughs> and say, so now, guidance in this also, guidance is there for spirituality, isn't it? In spirituality, we have to, this is why Hinduism has always been so broad. Within the body of Hinduism, you can accommodate any type of tamasic devotee, rajasic devotee, sattvic devotee. You used to hear Ram Krishna Paramahamsa speak about this profusely. He said there are different types of devotion. There is sattvic devotion, rajasic devotion and tamasic devotion. And it is there. Who is going to send it away? Who will send it away? It is not going to go away. So you accept it, see it, and say, this is the way the world is. You can't do anything about it. It's going to be like that. With, give, have, um, have this as the given. Now this given, now you figure out how to feed the spirituality and how to evolve with that. Not to try to change that. So what do we do? We say, yes. All people will come at all different types of swabhav. Let this swabhav be there. Not to, there are many religions in the world. They want everybody must be same. Have you seen that? Everybody must do the same thing at the same time. That is utter foolishness. Totally against the grain of the world. The world is a natural, is full of a natural variety. See? Nana swabhava. And nobody could change. Even if you, in your, in your utter foolishness, if you try to change it, you will become a fool. Not the world. The world will not become a fool. The one who is trying to change the nature of Bhagwan Sansar, he will become a fool. So, that Sansar is given like that. So, then what are we trying to do with all of this spirituality and all? We are trying to propagate in people those gunas and qualities which will help them to move along the spiritual path. Not to change or have a nature of, of anybody. Those gunas and qualities, you see if you are going along, I remember some tea that I had gone somewhere, pilgrimage. I, I just starting off. I was just starting off the bottom of that hill. Maybe Ketar or Vaishnav Devi or something. And a man was coming down and he gave me a stick, he said, you will need this. He gave me his stick because he had just come down. He said, take this. Now, along the journey, if you can take a stick to help you walk, you'll take or not? you take. So, in the same way, that is given my swabhav, his swabhav is different, everybody's swabhav. But if you could get the stick, so in spirituality, we give the stick to to walk, not to change anybody's swabhav or nature or any such thing. That is foolhardy, you will not waste time. That is wasting time. Your swabhav is like that, your swabhav is everybody's swabhav is like how it is. We are giving the tool, the stick, the, the, you know. The Sahara, Alamana, give to walk along that path. So, he's telling, but without your help, we cannot drop this attachment to our 
Now here swabhav means when every, each individual swabhav and the second point which is a very important point you know. I should not think that my nature as a poisonous creature means in this case a snake or my nature as a wicked person or my nature as a good person this that sattvic and this one rajasic and all but that is my nature and even that has to be dropped. Yeah, I'm a rajasic type person you know. So that's not my nature. That is swabhav. But my swarup is something else. So at one point, see, first I accept my swabhav. Then I pursue my swarup through spirituality, given my swabhav. My swarup, my essential nature is satchit ananda. I may be rajasic and all that is swabhav. My Swarup is Satchitananda. So I pursue my Swarup, Satchitananda, given my Swabhav. I do it through spirituality. This is the idea. So he said, no, that part of relinquishing my Swabhav also and re realizing my Swarup, that is difficult. It's a Swayam. By ourselves, we cannot do that thing. Very difficult. See? Bhavan hikaram tatra Sarvagnyo jagadishwaraha Anukraham nigraham va Manyase yadvide hinaha Manyase tadvide hinaha He bhavan, O bhavan. He, karanam, you no, 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 not eight case actually. You alone, not second case. Bhavan hi karanam tatra sarvagnyaha jagadishwaraha anugraham nigraham va. Means to say that you alone, hey Prabhu, you are sarvagnyaha jagadishwaraha, the lord of the whole universe, and you are the one who can favor us or punish us. Anugraha nigraha anugraham nigraham va manyase tad videhinaha. You can arrange for our punishment, but you can arrange also for our favor. So, therefore, what he means, he doesn't ask, what he means to say is, you favor us. Favor us. So, and this is where, see, from the I told you, Ved Vyasji, when we started this, I told you, Ved Vyasji had done all Upanishads and all Brahma Sutras and all that kind of thing. Compiled, put them together and then re uh, made the Brahma Sutras and all Gyan. And then he was not satisfied. Remember when we started this, I told. Then Naradji told him about this Bhagavatam. So now in the Bhagavatam, from the Gyan, you see Ved Vyasji has to come now into bhakti and here admit that somewhere in all of that Bhagwan has a very essential role to to play somewhere in all of my gyan in all of my highfalutin knowledge Bhagwan has an essential role to to play so Bhagwan is the one who the one whose help we need in this part of spirituality given over and he is karma phala data and see how many lifetimes we have lived see the logic of all of this eh? we have lived countless lifetimes in countless lifetimes how many karmas we have done countless karmas and we have to receive the result of all of those karmas and our karmas will not only you cannot live in this world and only do good karmas all these crooks and criminals also do a lot of good karmas they cannot do only bad karmas and all you saints and sages cannot do only good karma. They also have to do. So I mean, how many karmas we have, and what type? Good and bad. And the result of this will come naturally on its own at some time. But Bhagwan is the one who can bring this result now instead of having it come a hundred years later in another birth and bring it now. Or something which is supposed to come now, you could push it there. He will not interfere with the law of karma because the result will come. He could just interfere with the, the sequence in which the karmas will come. 
you see. So he's the one who can arrange, he said, you see, that's vitehi, naha, for our anugraha, nigraha, favor and punishment anytime. So now if Bhagawan brings all my good karma, collect all my good karma and bring it for me, you know, let me get moksha. So the, the God principle and the anugraha of Bhagawan, the grace of the Lord is possible and this is bhakti marga, see? This is the bhakti mark. Then that itself is a whole long lecture by itself. Huh? Now we have to say that the grace is always available. Bhagavan's grace is always available. It is for the taking. Human beings don't take. They want it, but they don't take. It's an amazing thing. One fellow they, in, a, in a dinner party, all of them sitting here by the table and he and his wife and family, everybody. She gets up and she goes there and takes gulab jamun and comes back. She eats. Then she goes back there and uh, after two, three minutes, takes another gulab jamun, comes back, eat. Goes there. Six times she went there and took gulab jamun and came back here. And she ate all, all six. So her husband said, what is the matter with you? You're not ashamed. Every time you go there, they see you taking gulab jamun. She said, why should I be ashamed? Every time I go there, I tell them I'm bringing it for you. <laughs> What to be ashamed of? <laughs> Wonderful thing. This thing is there for the taking. People don't take. They want, but they don't. That is not any signal to take Gulab Jamun six times. Eh? <laughs> so anyway, now Shuka Uvacha. Itya Karnya. Itya Karnya Vacha Praha. Bhagavan Karya Manushaha Bhagavan Karya Manushaha Natra Stheyam Tvaya Sarpa Natra Stheyam Tvaya Sarpa Samudram Yahima Chiram Samudram Yahima Chiram O Sarpa See how Bhagavan addresses him also in that line The second part of O Sarpa Like Hey Rama Hey Sarpa you should not stay here. You see, this is a passive sentence with an intransitive verb. In English, you can't do that. But in Sanskrit, you can do it very much so. Well, you all studying that now, no? You can very well make us see in English. How nice is language? I love this thing. In English, you say, I go to Kuva. It's a go is transitive, uh, intransitive verb. I go to Kuva. You cannot say Kuva is gone by me. Can you say? Kuva is gone by me. You see, I eat food. Food is eaten by me. You can say, na? From active, you can make it to passive. But go is not a transitive verb. I go to Kuva. You cannot say Kuva is gone by me because the verb doesn't allow that. But in Sanskrit, you could very well say, Kuva is gone by me. <laughs> but you understand the meaning or not? Kuva is gone by me, you understand the meaning or not? Then, what's the problem? Maya Kuva Gattva. Is it? So here, the same type of sentence is made there. The idea is not the rule, but understanding the meaning. That is, that is more important. In fact, what is more important? Understanding the meaning, no? Nah? Is a kuva is gone by me means I gone to kuva. But he said, but my dear Sarpa, from now on you cannot stay here. You go back to samudra. He was living at some samudra, some ocean somewhere. That's where Guru had attacked him. You know, now you go back there. Itya Akarnya Vachaha, listening to his words, Praha Bhagwan said, Bhagwan Praha, which Bhagwan Karya Manushaha. Karya Manusha means that Bhagwan who is assumed a human form and acting like a human being. Karya Manushaha. He is called a, uh, the Lord who has taken a human form. Karya Manushaha, Bhagwan. So listening to this Sarpa like this and his wisdom, 
Bhagwan said, no, but you can't stay here now, you go back because, see all of these, uh, that's mar- uh, 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 next line, Svagnyatya Patyadaradyo Gonrabhihi Bhunjatam Nadi. This also has a nice little message in it. You alone, with your family, you came and you took over this whole Yamuna, that big portion of Yamuna. No cows, no people, nobody could come there. So one man, one fellow, enjoying the whole Yamuna. Big swath of that land and everything there. So you cannot stay here anymore. You go, so now the people, so many countless people and all the cows and everybody can enjoy this thing. So there is the proper distribution of resources also is there behind those lines, you know. Proper distribution of resources. You can't have one person enjoying everything and, and that is what's happening in the world now. 100 people, how many is it? 100 or 1,000? 1,000. 1,000 people in England own all the wealth. And you have 60 million, million people who own not only 1,000 or everything. What type of distribution of wealth is that? Resources, you see in this case. So that type of thing. Now, don't think that the Bhagavad Puran is communist or anything like that. Bhagavad, Bhagavad Puran <laughs> understands that they will be rich and they will be poor. But you have to have some sort of, yes, balance. Some, some sort of equitable distribution. Not such, such lopsided distribution of wealth. Or resources. That is the idea. That lopsided distribution is not good. So Bhagwan sent him back there. And, and, and there's a Palastuti for this whole Katha also. Eh? See that Palastuti. This is number 61. Ya etat smaren martyaha tubhyam madanushasanam Kirtayanubayo Santyo Nayushmat Bhayamap Nuyat. Why are you saying this story which I just told about Kalia, Mardan, Kalia, and all of this story, right? If anybody studies this in the evening time, chants it and tells it and studies it and all that kind of thing in the evening time, he will never have any fear of snake. So all those people who fear snake <laughs> should, should go on reading this. This story, all fear of snake will go away. But nice, uh, nice palastuti. <laughs> because everybody is afraid of snakes. People are so scared of snakes. Like there are many people who don't go to the mountain with us because of that only. They heard that there are snakes there. So no, no, I am not going. And don't worry, those people who are scared of snakes, snakes will come in their dream. What do you do then? When snakes come in your dream, what do you do? <laughs> you can't come out of your body and run away. So anyway, the Shastras have all sorts of things. And don't doubt it also. One who studies it well, fear of snakes will go away. Okay, now, let's see here. 